Welcome to La Course by Le Tour de France. Just before the final stage of the men's Tour de France, the women will ride the legendary circuit on the Champs-Élysées. The riders will face a hard and fast race in the streets of Paris. Winner of the inaugural edition of La Course, Marianne Vos, explains why it is special to race in Paris. Well, the special thing is that we race on the final day of uh, Le Tour uh, on the Champs-Élysées in Paris, in one of the most iconic places of uh, cycling and we are here uh, just ahead arriving just ahead of the men's bunch uh, so that's uh, that's a big thing and you see already in the build up that the girls are excited to to race here for women cycling i think it's important to have this uh, this combined event and uh, of course we hope that uh, that it yeah that it helps and uh, that more and more people see the beauty of women cycling i think just you know how iconic is the Champs-Élysées, the Tour de France, the Paris, you know. It's not every day you get to race in a major city in front of such big crowds and it's been a long time coming. Obviously, back before my time there was a Women's Tour de France where they got a chance to finish here in this iconic place. But in my time, you know, three years ago they introduced this event and I think everyone gets behind it. It's, it's iconic in the world of cycling around the world. So, you know, it brings out the special edition tops t caps excitement you know everyone in the peloton you know wants to be on that stage it's it's getting shown worldwide like as we say there's very few races that we get that kind of exposure and opportunity you know to sh showcase women cycling well here's half of the races at like couples and it's going to be hard on that one and yeah definitely it's going to be the fastest race so far i think the nature of the course it makes it difficult to get away like last year we did see you know a solo winner just ahead of the peloton but it was also very wet conditions. Um, I think we'll see a very aggressive race, but it's likely to come down to a bunch sprint just because the bunch is going to roll so much faster than people out the front by themselves unless it's like a very, very, very strong individual. So it should be exciting and everybody will try their chance, particularly teams without sprinters, but I think we'll end up seeing a bunch sprint in the, in the end. So it's not as flat as people think on as it looks on television, but it's it's really fast. The cobbles are hard and the slight drag to uh, to the Arc de Triomphe, it's, it's pretty pretty hard, but to get away so low or in a, in a little break, it's, it's difficult because it's so wide and so fast. And uh, But I, I assume that there are a lot of teams that want to attack and want to have a, a hard race. And uh, some teams want to have a bunch print and some, some teams don't. So uh, it's, it's going to be interesting, but fast anyway. This 89 kilometer race starts on Place de la Concorde. Turn right to Jardin de Tullières, dive into the tunnel and through the Rue de Rivoli, back to Place de la Concorde, where they enter the Champs-Élysées, then all the way down to Arc de Triomphe, around the monument, back onto the Champs-Élysées and ride the lap again. 13 laps and 89 kilometers later, with the finish on the Champs-Élysées. From kilometer zero, the women open the gas handle and it goes very, very fast. As always, beautiful scenery in the streets of Paris. Then the first break is a fact. Brandt, Black, Barnes and Sabolinskaya cut themselves away from the peloton and get around 10 seconds. Around the Champs-Élysées and back to the Place de la Concorde. The sounds of the shifting and the wheels gliding over the cobbles is amazing. The group is caught after a couple of laps and more and more attacks are placed, but nobody really gets away. You can see from the back of the pack that the speed is enormous and it's hard to keep up. The speed is so high and it's over 40 kilometers an hour. If you are dropped a few meters, then it's hard to get back into the peloton. There are teams who gamble on a bunch sprint, some teams also ride for the final break. Last year's edition proved to be effective when Anna van der Breggen placed a final attack in the last few corners of the race and managed to stay in the front of the peloton. Then in the last couple of laps, again, it's Brandt of Rabolev that tries to get away together with Amy Peters and Lauren Stevens. Then a crash in the middle of the peloton. And as you can see, a bump in the road, 
and you cannot avoid a crash anymore. The three riders almost get 10 seconds due to the crash and they are trying to extend that lead. Then the final lap. The last time around the Arc de Triomphe and on to the Champs-Élysées. And another crash. The rider from Ale Cipollini is seriously hurt. He has been taken to the hospital. And moments later, another crash taking out half of the peloton. Taking out the leader of the young rider classification, Kasia Nivia Doma. So now the peloton is about 30 riders. Then Alan van Dijk wants to do the same as Anna van der Breggen last year and places a massive attack in the last lap. She's getting a few meters, but the peloton is not letting her go. And Van Dijk is caught on the last corner just before the final sprint. Now it is Lotta Lapisto that starts the sprint really early. And Chloe Hosking of Wiggle High Five is responding to that attack, passes her, and although it is a very, very long way to go, she keeps on pushing until the finish line and wins the 2016 La Course by Le Tour de France. Tour de France avec la FDJ, Chloe Hosking, formation Wiggle High Five, le sourire, elle n'en croit pas ses yeux, elle est lauréate sur la plus belle herbe du monde, sur les Champs-Élysées, Chloe Hosking. Um, I started my sprint super early and I was like, if I start now, maybe I'll hang on for a podium, but then they didn't come around me. So <laughs> yeah, um, again, overwhelmed and can't really comprehend it. And yeah, to cross first on these roads in front of this crowd is just yeah, crazy. And I don't think something that I thought I would achieve in my career. So I'm just, it's still sinking in. <laughs> of course, in, the, in, in first I was a little disappointed, but yeah. You know, it's always difficult to get in the right position and then, uh, yeah, the others want to win too. So, um, I think uh, for, for the sprint I did, uh, the third place was, uh, was most I could aim for. Yeah, you know, it's really hard to get away here, uh, especially because it was a very strong headwind today in the last kilometer. So, yeah, I knew it would be really difficult, but I thought, let's just give it a go. I mean, nothing to lose. So, uh, it wasn't spontaneous. I planned it from the start. I didn't, I wasn't very active in the race because I knew yeah, probably everything would come back together and I thought the only chance to do something is probably in the last kilometer. So, uh, yeah, that was planned. Of course, when Ellen moves, the whole peloton is scared. So um, it forced the Canyon Shram train to go and um, they only had two girls left. So then um, Elena Amalusik sort of took it to 1K to go, but then she had nothing left. And then Rabo took over. So I jumped and I sort of was able to get to Ellen and then I jumped again. And, um, yeah, they, they couldn't come around me, so... Um, yeah, I don't think that sort of sprint would, would work very often, but it worked today, so. Yeah, today it was really hectic race. It was many crashes, and actually I can say that I was the lucky that I was only involved in the one crash. It was about three or four k's to go. Uh, I think someone in the front just lost connection uh, with the handlebar. The arms uh, were slipped down from the handlebar, and yeah, it was big crash, and uh, I had no place to, no space to avoid it. Uh, fortunately, I didn't really lay down on the ground. I only was hit by the girls uh, to my back, so and nothing serious happened. Only my poor bike is uh, a bit uh, in bad condition now. How will you celebrate that one today? Uh, with my family. So they're here and so is my fiancé. And um, I saw them after the finish and I think they were all a bit overwhelmed. Um, when I was riding away, my fiancé had his head on the, on the fence. I think he couldn't believe it. So um, yeah, I'll go spend some time with them and then we're actually going to go and hang out in Normandy some family time afterwards and just yeah, um, keep training. Uh, you know, my goal is the World Championships, so can't can't rest now. So it is Chloe Hosking of Wiggle High Five that wins La Course by Le Tour de France. Lotta Lapisto of Big La Cervello is second. And Marianne Vos of Rabolev completes the podium. On the UCI Women's World Tour ranking, it is still Megan Garnier that leads, followed by her teammate Lizzie Armitstedt and Elisa Longoborghini of Wiggle High Five. Kasia Nivia Doma is still the leader of the young rider classification. Next stop, Prudential Ride, London. <laughs> 